parachute centre is located here at 318 10th Street, Northwest Calgary. 10th Street connects the centre of the city to the art college and further north to the university. Begun in 1975 by Works, Chuck Stake Enterprises and Duck Ventures, the centre established itself as the only available primary source facility for experimental art between Toronto and Vancouver. The actual background to the facility design was initiated in 1972 with the creation of the art group Works, with its performance, exhibition and publication projects. The continuation was to establish within Parachute an artist's publication archive, a video production facility and an open, flexible space to encourage creative music, art performance, lectures, readings and the display through exhibition of artist documents, the accumulated present tense history of their activities. What some find disturbing about general idea is our resort to false nature. Parachute has always been interested in establishing dialogues between artist and artist, visiting artists and the public, as well as encouraging a questioning attitude within the audience towards the artist. The formats for this task are not ready-made. We constantly are attempting to avoid the extremes of mindless entertainment and the status quo avant-garde. In the first year, we organized formal discussions between artists and art community with composers, multi-instrumentalists Anthony Braxton and Leo Smith, between video performance artist Willoughby Sharp, between artist-composer filmmaker Michael Snow, and between ourselves, the artist working within the center. We can backtrack through some of the specifics of the first year program later, but for now, let us look over the software documents that we have made in the year that has just passed. In 1975, Leo Smith played a solo concert here. In 1976, he returned with an ensemble called New Delta Acre. Just before Oliver Lake's solo concert on the second day of their visit, the New Delta Acre taped for us a definitive discussion on their approach to creative music. The of pieces I do don't, are not involved with harmony. Mm -hmm. Then again, some of them will do. Mm -hmm. What about yourself? Um, well, I don't use the term harmony. Uh, I use sound, and by that I mean a combination of, of other sounds, let's say, smaller sounds, uh, combined together to make larger sounds. During the second of three music festivals in the first year, we invited three from the CCMC, Canadian Creative Music Collective, to visit and work with us as part of Festival Calgary 1976. Michael Snow, Larry Dubin and Bill Smith joined with local musicians and five concerts were played in one week. This year we invited a quartet from the CCMC, Larry Dubin, Al Matz, Casey Sokol, and Peter Anson. Eugene Chadbourne has been Parachute's music director. He assisted with setting up Now Opening, a weekly workshop for creative musicians and composers. His own work was recorded on our facilities and released as the first volume of solo acoustic guitar music on Chadbourne's own Parachute label. This next segment was recorded on February the 12th 1977, a piece for solo prepared guitar.
Thank you very much. This concert of the Bill Jamison Trio is part of our creative music series for Festival Calgary 1977. Others that took part included Windsor Vani and Frank Lockwood, Randy Hutton, Richard Baker and Eugene Chadbourne, Marcella Bienvenu and Clive Robertson. Parachute's music series is sponsored often in collaboration with CKUA Edmonton and the Southern Alberta Art Gallery, Lethbridge. Much of Parachute's music budget is donated by interested individuals within the community. Our music series within the last 12 months has contained creative musics from both the classical and jazz traditions. The former would include Windsor Viney on John Cage, Jerry Ozipka's concert for electronics and violin, Martin Bartlett's concert for synthesizer and voice, Peter Moeller and Eugene Chadbourne's Latitude Music concert, and Green and Osborne's Environmental Music's concert. The latter would include Steve Lacey from Paris, the CCMCQ from Toronto, Oliver Lake from New York, and this concert of Roscoe Mitchell. Parachute, with assistance from Explorations, carried out a transmission experiment with Radio Cora broadcasting many of our concerts and readings, and with two cable companies scheduling a space company's real-life show, general ideas going through the motions, Mr. Peanut on campaign, a reading by Richard Kostelanitz, and this program with Roscoe Mitchell. Today we're pleased to have with us Mr. Roscoe Mitchell, who is one of the world's finest composers and jazz solo artists, saxophone artist. Welcome to the program, Thank Roscoe. You. What specific reason are you in the city here for? Well, I'm parachute a center concerts. And yeah, I'm doing uh, uh, some solo saxophone concerts at the Parachute Center um, here in Calgary uh, tonight and tomorrow. How would you, how would you describe your, your music to someone who, is, who has never heard it before? Well, that's a, that's a kind of a difficult question because I don't want to think of, of my music being any one particular thing at any one particular time. Right. Um, I like to try to reserve the right to explore music to the fullest of my potential. Hello, Calgarians. My name is Vincent Trousseau, a.k.a. Mr. Peanut, and I'm very happy to be in your living rooms tonight. Before I introduce my guest speaker, I'd like to read from you the latest from We Magazine. Mr. Peanut, government is nuts. Quiz time, everybody. Who is the first politician to seek high public office on the basis of his intimacy with the peanut? Wrong. It was an artist named Vincent Trousseau who ran for mayor of Vancouver, BC. We would now like to show excerpts from other forms of performance, a few of which could be called performance art. But many of the performances were the artist has collaged entertainment formats, such as radio plays, television, or the cabaret to at least give an audience a recognizable format as a reference entry point. Many of the performances by artists in Canada are a fusion of a lecture with video and or slides, sometimes including music or performance as one aspect of the work. Last year we organized performances by Marshall Lore, David Zack, Willoughby Sharp and Joe Singendonk. Dr. Brute and his band from Vancouver gave a sellout cabaret performance. General Idea came through twice, the first time for a reading, the second as guests of Festival Calgary 1977 for a week. A Space Company visited us from Colorado, and Hank Bull and Patrick Reddy performed their ongoing theater piece, The HP Radio Show. Clive Robertson performed a historical reconstruction of the work of Joseph Boys, gave a performance lecture titled what about the art performance? And this year performed a video work entitled In Video Traction.
Of the 62 events we organized between September 1975 and May 1976, the Dr. Brute Band of artist Eric Metcalf proved to be, for the audience, the art performance bridge. The following recording was made on March 27, 1976, with Hank Ballon piano and Suzanne Flechette and Notary So Jack on accompanying saxes. From the center's inception, we created an interdisciplinary context to house art's present activities. We had no guidelines, or at least there were no existing guidelines that we wished to follow. The tape you are now watching is a recording of the behavioral art group, Reindeer Work, in their own English environment. Poet, writer, Vic Dor read his immediate work, Forget a collaborative tape voice piece. Vancouver poet Zonko has visited us on three different occasions to read his diaries. Jerry Gilbert read here and showed his tapes. David Buckham gave a reading, or was it a fashion document? Opal Nations gave a reading that was also pure theater. Fielding Dawson gave a reading produced a tape work and also left us with an oral document of a collaboration done with David Young in Vancouver. Victoria Walker read over a backdrop of slides of her visual art. Richard Kostelanitz arrived unannounced and gave a lecture for a video camera so that we could show the tape as a reading at some later date. Wisdom is only one of the domains of the new spirit in today's poetry which often confines itself to research and investigation without looking for lyrical significance. Our exhibition program we consider as an information source. Both historic and immediate considerations are recognized. This year we brought in catastrophe art from Japan, an exhibition of the Italian artist Cavallini, and a display of the English group Reindeer Work. All three exhibitions were widely distributed to other centers in Canada. We also had an exhibition of the Danish fluxist artist, Eric Anderson, a retrospective of the scores and writings of Canadian composer Martin Bartlett, a show of Calgary artist Jack and Montreal artist Trevor Goring. General Ideas showed the 1971 Miss General Idea pageant, which hadn't been shown in Canada since its inception for the AGO in 1971. Nancy Nickel from Toronto sent us a photo and audio installation. Paul Wong from Vancouver showed his modern television loops. We also made possible a Tibet carpet exhibition so that the Tibetans living in Alberta could stimulate interest in their crafts in order to establish for themselves an alternate means of support and a continuation of their culture. Video is very important for our function. It allows us to store time and play it back when necessary. It allows us to view time which has passed in the ways in which it was passed. Our video facility has been used by us as documentary tools, by us for creating new works, by the community as a publication to encourage or supplement civic opinion, and by the NFB as an editing facility. Our archives contain art publications in print, audio, and video formats. They are not only representative of North American contemporary art, but include many rare and important publications from the rest of the world. Recently, the National Archives has shown interest in acquiring a complete listing of our holdings. The archive survives on personal exchange with artists. The publication of such documents by the artist has but one function. It demonstrates and gives proof of their existence. We subscribe to many artist-edited or artist-written publications and have used our storefront window to display small press publications. Eckhart from Switzerland, File from Toronto, Intermedia from Vancouver, and numerous anthological displays. Archive shows have included Jerry Driva, Paul Obrowski, 
Opal Nations, Martha Rossler, and Gerd Schirm. Centerfold is Parachute's newspaper, printed every six weeks in an edition of 1100. Its essays, reviews, and listings are read by most artists and most institutions in some 15 countries. This has not been an all-inclusive document of our program last year. It has been made as a supplement to the bound volume of 10 issues of Centerfold. We have neglected to mention dance performances by missing associates. Elizabeth Chitty and Terry McGlade, and Co-Motion. We have neglected to mention that we have also shown films by Michael Snow and English filmmaker Mike Leggett. A detailed audio and video record is kept here. Please ask for any specific item.